for Diamond Lake School District 76. Roll call, please. Ms. Angola, here. Ms. Bayless, here. Ms. Hale, here. Mr. Halpy, here. Mr. Candela, here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we now open the floor for public comments on agenda items. I see that we don't have any um, visitors in person, but if we have anyone online, Okay, well, there being no one in attendance and no public comments, we will move on to presentations. Wonderful. We have two presentations this evening. Um, our first one is a summer learning update from Mr. Preble. So I'm gonna hand the floor over to Mr. Preble. Thank you very much, Dr. Sharma Lewis. Thank you, uh, board, for allowing me to present some of the information from summer learning this summer. Uh, just as a program overview, uh, we can go to the, the second slide there. Uh, just a reminder of what it looked like. Um, summer learning dates were June 6th. We had two sessions this year, June 6th through June 30th. Second session ran two weeks in August from the 1st through the 11th. We had in-person delivery for the first time in three years, totally in-person, I should say, for the first time in three years. Um, we went Monday through Thursday, 8 to 11.30, like we normally did. And we were uh, in district this time, both at, at Diamond Lake and West Oak campuses. We covered SEL, reading, math, and dual language. We uh, also had our extended school year get, uh, students get service during this time. We included summer band as we normally do. That's usually the last week in the session in June, and it was last week in session one. Uh, they, their times were the same as our summer learning, and then they concluded with an in-person concert on June 30th. So just to give an idea of what their day looks like, these are the program minutes. So um, if you're in dual language or in general education, uh, you receive 60 minutes of reading, 60 minutes of math, 30 minutes of SEL, and then 30 minutes of uh, MTSS or intervention time. Um, our ESY students uh, received services that targeted their goals in their IEP. That would be the difference there. Next slide. So our enrollment, um, I will say this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to my cheat sheet on my notes here. Our, our average attendance for session one was actually 80% across the board and session two was 77%, slight dip like we always see after the 4th of July, but it was encouraging to see that um, the overall numbers were 80 to 77%. When you break it down, however, um, when you look at our general education enrollment numbers, our dual enrollment numbers, and our, our ESY enrollment numbers. Session one for Gen Ed, we had 72 students enroll. During session one, we had a 65% attendance rate with those uh, students. During second um, session, our percentage of, of uh, attendance actually rose three points to 68%, but you can see the enrollment dropped about 15 students. Dual language, uh, much the same, 45 students enrolled for session one. We had a nice 78% attendance there. Um, that attendance rose to 80%. However, we only had 20 students enrolled in the session two. So, um, you know, the, our classes were very small in session two. Now, the difference between the Gen Ed and dual language and the ESY is um, as families registered for Gen Ed and dual language, you could pick session one or session two, or you could pick both. For ESY, we asked for our families, you're signing up for both sessions because we're targeting those goals. So you can see the enrollment stayed steady. We had 37 students signed up for both sessions. However, that uh, attendance rate dropped from 70 to 55% in the second session. So our program outcomes, when we, what we did um, is we created using EduClimber, we created collect of our students that attended summer school. And we went back into the data and we, we graphed them from their fall in 21 star scores to their spring in 22 uh, star scores. And then just this past week and fall again. So when you look at these numbers for our, uh, and this is, this is um, arranged by school. So our first three bar graphs are Diamond Lake School going from fall to fall. Then we have uh, West Oak Intermediate, then we have West Oak Middle School. So as we're looking at um, 
our fall data from 21 for Diamond Lake School, 32% of our students were in tier two, 68% uh, of our students were in tier three. So on this graph, the gold is the tier two and the uh, charcoal is the tier three students being represented. In spring, our tier two, or excuse me, yes, in spring, our tier two at Diamond Lake uh, fell to 27% and our tier three increased to 72%. Again, these are just the, the, the students who went to Diamond Lake School that went to summer learning. When we took the uh, uh, STAR assessment this fall, our tier two increased to 37% and our tier three decreased to 63%. So we actually saw some growth and the plan and the goal is always for that retainment. We don't have a summer slide, but growth is a nice bonus there. So that it was, it was good to see. Uh, West Oak Intermediate School, uh, fall in 21, we had tier two, 44% of our students. Tier three was 56%. In spring of uh, 22, tier two actually fell to 41% and tier three to, uh, grew to 59%. However, during this next, uh, this last assessment last week, tier two went up to 45% and tier three went, dropped to 55%. So again, we're moving in the right direction. We had a little bit of a different story with, the, with our middle school students. Uh, in fall of 21, tier two, we had 19% and tier three was 81%. That improved in the spring to 32% in tier two and 68% in tier three. <coughs> Excuse me. Nice giant growth here. We went from uh, in the fall this past week, we increased it from 32% to 42% in tier two, and we decreased from 68% to 58% in tier, in tier three. So that was actually a, a very nice surprise. We, uh, those numbers are, uh, are good to see. So one of the things we wanna do, if you if go ahead to the next slide, is talking about next steps. So what we've done, we've compared spring 22 to fall 22 to see if, if we're retaining that material. We're seeing that we're doing that. Um, we've grouped the students into Edge Climber to easily uh, chart their growth through the year. So we're gonna monitor these students also through the winter and the spring benchmarks to see just what kind of things we're doing and what we can learn from the data. But we wanna do a continue start stop for the summer learning program. One of the things I wanna do, and this has a lot to do with our enrollment and our attendance, is I want to design a survey for all stakeholders, everybody in the community, parents, staff, students, what can, what can draw families and students to our program? We can look at the attendance percentages and those look great, but the, the amount of students here, it's, it's, it's not a lot. In fact, when we started session two and we're walking around the buildings, it's, it was almost difficult to tell where summer school was taking place. There are so few kids here. And uh, we wanna be able to provide an opportunity in some manner that will draw more students in. What does that look like? We have some ideas, but I wanna hear from the community and what their needs are. I want to take a look at curricular materials. Now, for this summer uh, learning session, we relied on our second step programming for SEL, our My Math resources for math, and our F and P materials for our reading portion. If we can, if we can, um, I don't want to say guarantee enrollment, but if we, we know who's coming with enough notice and we and we can shape that, we can build a better curriculum roadmap for summer learning. Now, granted all students that are coming into summer learning are gonna be at different levels and that's fine, but we can differentiate on something if we have a foundation in place, if that makes sense. So we wanna take a look at what that's going to look like. And then that also falls into that recruitment and registration process. Perhaps starting earlier with the recruitment for both students and staff so we know what we have. Work with families to commit to coming to the program because uh, what'll happen a lot of times is we'll have, you know, we'll have a hundred hundreds of kids sign up. And then by the time we get to summer school, half, only half actually enroll. So it's like, how can we, how can we make that um, a more sustainable number? And I'm open, you know, we're all open to ideas and what we can do with that. Does that mean somehow create a full day program? What does that look like? You know, are there different activities to do in the afternoon? Um, is part of the reason why we're not getting the enrollment that we'd like to see because families don't have a place for their children to go after 1130. It's a very strong possibility. 
Um, can we partnership with the park district, even though they're technically out of our district, but that's somewhere to go, something to do that we can um, possibly transport students over there. It gives our students a full day experience. It gives the parents what they need out of you know, the time. And then um, we, can, we can build a program around it. So those are just some ideas, but again, uh, the, the concept is to build um, some type of survey, some sort of uh, research gathering tool so that we can make some better decisions going forward for summer learning. But I want to keep it brief and uh, open up to any questions that you all may have. Could you um, remind me, how many students were invited to attend? We actually open it to all students. Okay. Uh, we do, um, so ESY is a little bit different. Students that qualify for ESY in those IEP meetings, we're having those conversations, we're inviting them to attend. Um, with our open enrollment for general education and dual language, um, we don't aggressively recruit dual language, but we do uh, look at our students who are in tier two and tier three non-ESY students and reach out to those families that may not have enrolled and sit, you know, and, and, and prompt them to enroll. A lot of times early on, and I would say like, you know, April, a lot of families are heavily in, involved in, hey, we're gonna be there, we're gonna be there, we're gonna be there, and then it just, it doesn't happen. I wanna know why that is. Um, so as far as who we invite, everybody's invited. Maybe that does it need to look different? That's, that's something that remain to be researched, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like you get, I don't know, somewhere between 10 and 20% of kids actually attend Yeah. Um, based on the population, but what would your target be? So if you're, if I mean, it sounds very much like the next steps you're looking at are 100% on the right track is to figure out what, what you yeah. can do to enhance the program. But like, if, if you had a goal or if you had a target, what would you be looking to target? So it's kind of a twofold answer there. In the current model, I would be targeting all of our tier two and tier three, tier three students because that's what this model is designed for. It's for that remediation, right? But if we can design a program that's gonna provide other opportunities for enrichment, we can, we can have a place for everybody. Sure. And why not have advanced math, advanced reading in summer school? I mean, that, that would be like a dream come true. I'm almost getting goosebumps talking about it, but it's, those are the types of things that we need to figure out you know, is there a market for that? Will people attend? Can we staff it? If we can't staff it internally, what are our options for, you know, bringing people from outside of our district in to do that? So that goes back to that uh, recruitment and registration process, starting early, but having kind of the, the program vision locked down so we know what we're trying to sell so that we can staff it and we can recruit families to, to participate in it. I'd love to see a program for all of our students. Yeah, I mean, that to me sounds great. When are you planning on trying to put out the survey? Well, that's one of the things that I wanted to ask tonight um, was what are some things you may as a board want to see on the survey? I would love to put the survey out in a couple of weeks, but I don't want to just throw, you know, my questions up. But what, is there anything that you can think of? And you don't have to answer me now. Maybe email me over the next week or so and just let me know. What are some things that you're looking for to find out from our community of what we can do to make this a more attractive program. I mean, I think a lot of the points you raised would be points that that we would bring up to you in terms of, does your child re require essentially care for the rest of the afternoon? Mm -hmm. I would think that many of our families need a full day program because if they don't have an older student at home to watch the younger kids and, they, and the parents are working, there needs to be some kind of childcare. So a half day program, you know, even though they might want their student in there really doesn't work for them. I think the park district idea is very creative. My question to you would be about costs. Mm -hmm. Would we be fund that? Would the park district fund that? Um, we know cost is definitely an issue for a lot of our families. Would we be able to subsidize that? You know, how would the transportation work? How would the food right. work? Those kinds of things. You know, would there be any flexibility in the programming to let them, you know, do things they might be interested in or, you know, any of that? I mean, I think that all of those are to me, all of the questions and the issues you raised are, you know, right on target in, in line with everything we've seen kind of in the district in terms mm -hmm. of what the families repeatedly kind of indicated as, as issues um, mm -hmm. for other events, not just summer school. Yeah. In, in past programs that I've been a part of, we've done things where um, even staff have thrown out ideas of what they would love 
to teach during summer learning enrichment yeah. opportunity. I mean, I taught, I, when I was teaching, I taught a flight school component. Yeah. And if you have enough kids register, you go with it. And if you don't, then we either, you, you either teach something else or you're just not teaching summer learning. And so trying to navigate what that could look like, but then you're, you're absolutely right. How much of that can we afford to provide and how much of that is going to be a cost of families. And I could see that there's going to be a fine line in there somewhere where what we can offer from, from the district standpoint, what families are willing to support us on financially, and will we get the numbers there? So that's those, those are all questions I'd love to, to get the answers to in the survey. Yeah, I mean, I would think the goal would be to subsidize as much as possible for any family that needed that. Mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, I would work with Mr. Rogers on trying to figure out how we do that. How many, do you know offhand how many students in our district fall into that tier two and tier three? District wide, I, I would research that and get back to you on a number. Okay. I don't have that with me right okay. now. But. And no, I'm not, I'm not going to guess. I was about to guess, but I'm not going to. <laughs> no, that's fine. See, I, I, I just growing. didn't know if you knew. Did you say tier two and tier three? Yeah. one thought or question, um, kind of going with what Joy said, if you're thinking about potentially expanding the program to include enrichment, STEAM things mm -hmm. and, and such, maybe on the survey get gauge if certain classes were, had a, a slight fee and the core remedial classes were continued to to be completely mm -hmm. subsidized, would that yep. also entice families that might otherwise say, well, my child doesn't either has care issues or doesn't really require this. So it isn't something, whereas, oh, for a nominal fee, maybe I would be interested in sending them for like school or sure. whatever. It, it was just a thought to kind of yeah. go with that. Yeah, I think that, you know, a lot of our families that are paying for camp if there was an educational opportunity that would fall under the same, you know, time frame of the day that might have things that would be a mix of, you know, kind of curriculum to support them, but also, you know, fun things or additional activities that might be a nice mix. It's just that I think that part of the issue is too, you run into camp, start signing up early if people are very concerned with the childcare. Right. So. Um, and, and to go along with that, you know, and, and we have to, we have to figure out what our philosophy is as a district to you get into competitions there too as far as programming competition yeah. you know how do we want to build our relationships with the park district with the other camps we have um innovation learning going on we're going to draw from them potentially so what what can that look like how do we partner up so that we're not you know there's a, we, we, we want to work together not against each other and, and, and kind of navigate that so that's a big important piece to it Mr. Preble, I, first of all, I think this is really important and I really appreciate you, you know, you, you leading this. Um, it couldn't be more important to provide for folks who really need the help the most. Can you just help me better understand? I think I already fell behind. <laughs> Can you help me better understand uh, how, how slide five correlates to five, six, to slide six? And then I have another question on following slide so slide five which is not actually part of the present well are oh, you looking at, are you looking at the raw yeah. it's okay so it says okay. slide, slide slide five is not included in the overall presentation that was just almost like a note slide but it's just talking about general overall um attendance, attendance. yeah because what i was wondering because it if the attendance is 80 in session one and 77 in session two. And it, it just seems like the, the attendance when broken out- Doesn't quite add up does, to doesn't that. Doesn't add up. Another so reason got, why that slide's not confused. part of the presentation because what had happened was there was a calculation based on data that wasn't complete. Not a problem. That, that clears that <laughs> up for me. And then um, can you just uh, explain on the next, on that slide, what, just one more time for sure. me, what is we're looking, because I see number of students on the axes, and then we're talking about percent of students. Yeah, 
So what you have here, these are the students that are represented that went to summer learning. These are tier two and tier three students and um, not all it's, it's, the data is an edge of climber collected from the, the three benchmarks. So uh, fall of last year, spring of last year, fall of this year. It doesn't always line up. Some of the students that attended summer school may have not taken sure. um, one of those. So it's not a perfect um, amount across the school. Um, but what is important to see, if you look at it from a percentage standpoint, is that our students that are um, attending summer school are actually retaining, if not growing, uh, uh, based on what we're seeing here. So again, the, the overall student number doesn't line up, but the percentages are nice for what we're looking at from a, uh, a tier three growing, you know, moving into tier two standpoint. Is there any way There is. So, so that we're looking, you know, apples to apples. Right, straight yeah. across, it's linear. So yeah, we can get that cleaned up so that if, if anybody did not take one of the three, they would just be removed from the I mean, data. Even if it's just, even if it's just fall to spring, and spring, you know, you get those data points. We have, what's that? Yes, I will work on getting that cleaned up and sent back out to you. Any other questions? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Tonight is Mr. Rogers giving us a facility improvement update. All right. This is going to be very brief because it doesn't really do it justice just to look at pictures and doesn't do it justice to look at a, a 15 second or 20 second clip of the space, but Mr. Hansen was so kind to do a little overview of it. So at least you can kind of visualize what's going on so far. But, you know, as you can see, especially at the, uh, we're starting at Diamond Lake, uh, the space is nearly complete. We've got furniture in there. There's many more tables now. The only items we're missing right now is the projector and some of ViewSonic. So we have a, uh, some viewable spaces, but the cubicles that are in there are really nice. We currently have two occupants. There's the community li liaison and the occupational therapist. And then there's two blank spots right now that just act as kind of a traveling office or some student breakout rooms. And yeah, we've got a sweet little video here. So they all have the same furniture, lockable storage. Um, we'll have spot, uh, the projector will be on the straight back wall there. Then the opposite wall when you walk in will be a word wall that, the, that we're going to do a survey with staff and see um, you know, kind of a collage of what uh, what it means to be working here at Diamond Lake and the teamwork and collaboration that we we envision. And then there'll be two other screens that'll be on there. So it'll be uh, two different sides. You can view the uh, any presentations that are going on, board meetings, all summer curricular work will take place there. So we did our first meeting uh, today with PAC and it was a awesome time just being able to actually use that space and see the teacher's excitement. So uh, extremely, extremely cost-effective renovation we did, uh, just retrofitting an old gym that had uh, no purpose. It's, it, we did it, uh, we renovated this space cheaper than what it cost us to demo the floor. So uh, we did in a really, uh, it was a really nice effort with uh, Chris Thibodeau and the different contractors we worked with. And so the maintenance building, it, you can see it's, been, it went up pretty much in a weekend uh, to get the siding up. The space is uh, going to be a large interior space 
where we're going to have uh, racks just like you'd have at Home Depot. So that way we're going to have a, we have a forklift here. We're going to have different bays for each school. It's going to uh, enhance the storage that we have exponentially. And yeah, there's going to be two different bays you can enter. So there's a truck entrance, and then that's going to be a large entrance for our box truck. So the ceiling itself is, I think it's like 30 to 40 feet inside of there. It's gigantic. And there's a second story mezzanine where there's going to be office space right below that is going to be uh, a workshop area. So the goal is in the future, we can utilize that for some steam stem uh, type collaborative work in there where kids can have a, a nice spot to use uh, to work. Uh, but it is a, a gigantic space walking in there. Uh, it doesn't do it justice to seeing if the exterior. So Bays are gonna go all the way around uh, and just really enhance the, the storage capabilities. So that way we could actually free up some of these spots that we have in the building to be uh, unit, you know, more usable and learning space. So it'll be nice when we can actually do an overview and do a walkthrough on the inside. I believe we should be able to hold a board meeting over the professional development space in the next uh, two months. And then hopefully we can start doing some tours outside here once we get uh, everything, uh, the, the, currently, the ceilings are getting uh, uh, drywalled, painted, so that will space will be available in the next couple of weeks here. So any questions about the projects or progress? Question. First of all, everything looks great, and it's wonderful to see space being utilized in that way and to create such an inviting um, area for staff and any guests that might come and see it. Um, is there any insurance implications with having um, forklifts and such high, I mean, I was just thinking just from a safety standpoint, um, would that be something that's already been changed, discussed? I, I just was curious about the insurance with having potentially kids working in a space such as this. So yeah, that, that, that's it. Uh, Answer that. I guess the basic element of that one is uh, the district does have general live, a general umbrella coverage that you know covers anything uh, for the maintenance team. But yes, when we do have kids and potentially in that space, that's something I'll have to explore a little bit more thoroughly. It's more of a you know a, hopefully a couple of years down the road pipe dream. Just once we get the space utilized, but uh, you know we really do want to make sure we can use as much of this as we can and give kids some hopefully some other opportunities that just you know right now we have our our fuse program is operating out of a, a breakout classroom so we'd like to be able to do more workshop related items but um you know we we will the uh, mr thibodeau and i talked about once we get this space organized we're going to be having another team come in and make sure it's retrofitted safely you can't just install bays and hopefully they just stay put so there'll be a lot of securing and things like that we'll have to do. But yeah, they, the hope is that this is going to be a spot for everyone that we can that we can use. So the maintenance team's at least excited about the opportunity to potentially use this for some uh, instructional space. So I was just sharing with um, Mrs. Hale that we were thinking on our next board meeting, which is September 20th. If you're all available, maybe meeting over at Diamond Lake around 615 and we can show you our new space and then come back here and hopefully the weather's nice. We can take a walk outside and do the maintenance emporium. <laughs> That's gonna stick with me forever. Thank it you. It is. Thank Sounds you, good. thank you, Mr. Rogers. All right, so I will send out an invite uh, for those of you that would like to join us. And that is all for presentations this evening. Okay, fantastic. Then we will move on to the business agenda. Um, we have two items this evening. The first item is for review, and that is the omnibus vote agenda. Um, the second item is up for action, and that is a personnel item. So be it resolved, the Diamond Lake 76 Board of Education accepts and approves the personnel items as depicted on the agenda. We have three new hires, we have two leaves of absence, and we have one resignation. May I have a motion to approve, please? Second. Yes. Yes. Okay, and that motion passes. And that concludes the business agenda for this evening. Um, moving on to board discussion. There is just one item um, under board discussion that I have, and I shared a memo with you. Um, so we were 
uh, have been, we were approached by um, IASB in their Press Plus issue to do online um, updates of when the board approves new policies that this subscription would just do it automatically right away for us. It would be linked to our website as well as a search engine to, for families to go on to the website and, and to look for it. So I kind of summarized it. Our neighboring districts um, I've listed on there are also using it and they enjoy using it. It's really quick and efficient. I've listed out the prices. Um, so it's in addition to what we're already paying, which is about you know $2,500 um, to update the subscription. Uh, talk to Mr. Hansen and technology wise, it meets and they would be able to interface with each other. So our website would have no issues hosting it. Um, but I just wanted to see if the board was interested in pursuing something like this. Um, and if you are, we can go ahead and take care of it, um, you know, because the cost is only 2,500 or would you prefer that we wait or are there any follow-up questions that you want me to pursue? How do these things happen? Because that's the actual change. Currently right now, essentially once there's an update, we would get essentially the agenda that's all that's a PDF version is update that whenever it's provided to me and it, they document when it was approved. So this would essentially just expedite that process a lot faster instead of uploading a, a file. I have a couple questions. I mean, I would be in favor of doing this in, in light of especially reading the search functionality for it because right now you really can't search. You can search if you know the keywords you can search to potentially find the section of the board policy but then you have to open the pdf and research there you know it, which is a pain if you're looking for a specific policy it's hard to find um i guess my question is just so right now we're paying for both press and press plus and then they add this on top like why doesn't why aren't they just offering like one offer where it's all rolled in why are there three different payments there because it's iasp my feedback to them would be, <laughs> where's the discount if we buy all three things? Yeah. And, and we why are we paying all these different fees? It's silly. I'm sure. I mean, I'm happy to ask, you know, since we're already Press Plus members, which is why we got the email, right? Yeah, like, you're already members. Discount. Why don't we do this? Yeah. I mean, I think it makes sense to do. It's, I mean, it is much better to have an interactive, um, an interactive policy manual just for anyone using the policies, whether it's board members, the community whatever i mean it's much better that way it's the, the pdf is nice in that they would send us the actual updated text so nobody is manually having to do those updates and that way i think it's it's likely you know you have a little bit more accuracy probably built in so this adds that functionality i just don't understand why they're just stacking all these costs i mean other than it's who it is but like i'm definitely can ask um when I follow up with them, is this something that the board is interested in then? I would think so. Unless, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I will follow up with you on if they can do anything to kind of well, consolidate Well, because in my opinion, cost. like, why doesn't this replace the other two? Mm -hmm. Like, why, why do we have to buy everything? I guess this is my question. Yeah. I mean, it's not an outrageous cost. To me, it's just kind of silly that it's like you have to buy each individual piece and yet they all build upon each other. So And Press Plus is supposed to be easier than Press, but you need one but you or have the to, other. Right. I mean, like, why would you do that? Like, yeah. shouldn't Press Plus incorporate Press? It, this should incorporate this. Yes. Anyway. Okay. But yes, I think the board is definitely in favor okay. of, of doing that. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And that is all I have for board discussion. Okay, great. So um, we had no freedom of information requests for notices and communications. We have, as always, the board meeting calendar. As always, if you know you will not be available, please let us know as soon as possible. Um, we have the governing board summary for CEDAL. John, are we, did we already cover the last CEDAL meeting in our last meeting? I can't remember the timing of it. Um. So, okay, yeah, the 24th. So, uh, I mean, that thing, the summary, 
did a nice job of covering it. Um, and yeah, and it wasn't that the next one that we have. Okay. <coughs> so okay. Nothing was discussed about that. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I th so I think that covers seat all. Then we have just the six day enrollment. Do we know why kindergarten is so low? Do we just have less kids? <laughs> it looks super tiny. It's nice though, right? Okay, that wraps up notices and communications. Um, now we move to public comments and petitions on non-agenda items. Do we have any attendees? We have three, okay. Um, for those of you joining us online, if you have any public comments or petitions on non-agenda items, please feel free to type those into the chat box and we'll give you a second to do so. And then we can read them into the meeting. So we'll just pause for a moment there. I'm not seeing anything. Okay. So there being no public comments, we will move on to others. Um, the only others I had for this evening were for the board and um, I wanted to revisit the um, DEI training. So I spoke to IASB and they offered us the dates of October, October 24th and no, I'm sorry. October 17th and 27th. So um, I will send out an email about that if you guys could let me know your availability for those. It's a Monday and a Thursday. Um, October what, 24th? I'm sorry, 17th and 27th, I think. Let me double check. But yeah, it's a Monday and a Thursday. So let me know if those work. If they don't, I'll, I'll go back to her. I thought I added that as a note to the board meeting, but it's not there. Um, but yes, I'll, I'll follow up via email. And then if you guys can let me know your availability, then I can follow up with them. And if those dates don't work, that's fine. I'll just go back to them. Um, did anyone else have any others? Okay, then we will um, move to adjourn to executive session for the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district or legal counsel for the district, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee or against legal counsel for the district to determine its validity, and for the selection of a per person to fill a public office, including a vacancy in public office when the district is given power to appoint under law or ordinance, or the discipline, performance, or removal of the occupant of public office when the district is given power to remove the occupant under law or ordinance, and for the setting of a price for sale or lease of property owned by the district. May I have a motion to adjourn to executive session, please? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks everybody.